On the portfolio side, what we did, so again, portfolio management is a, is a, funny, it's a funny business, and people expect tools to fix it all for them. And whenever you look at people doing portfolio management, I'm amazed at how many, I like to call it calisthenics, that they pull, to pull numbers and reports and to show how this portfolio is being managed. But then they'll turn around to myself, the consultant, and say, give me a tool where I can press a button and it's going to show me everything. There's no tool out there that's going to do that for you, right? You spend five days pulling together your portfolio report, and you're going to want me to program it into one tool that I press a button. So you got to be a little bit reasonable. So what we found at OpenX, again, the move from projects to products in OpenX's case is actually very difficult because they have this hum humongous system, right? So their reality is they're driving more projects in there. Um, but they were using a tool that was overly complex for what they needed. So what we did was pull out the tool that they were using and we put in place a simpler tool. We suggested they go with Portfolio for Jira, something simpler than what they were using. Okay? So we told them to start simple, get the basics of portfolio management going, get the reporting at a certain basic level, and then we'll look beyond it, right? But do expect to do some data manipulation. So that's pretty much everything we did from an assessment and consultant point of view. Wow, that's a lot. I'm tired. Just and that was, <laughs> so that was September to December, right? So now Paul is going to tell us what's happened since January when we started. Marisa and I were talking this morning, and I'm like, hold on, was this 2017 we did all this? No, 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 it was 2018. So it's been a very relatively fast journey. Um, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Come on, Sergio Leone. <laughs> Nobody likes the spaghetti westerns. Come on. So the good, everyone loves puppies and kittens. Let's give it up for puppies and kittens. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we actually completed in the first seven months of this process 28 different projects, from inception to completion to you know GA. Uh, in the previous year, it was 12 for the whole year. Okay. Now, a project's not a project's not a project not a project. Some of these were actually quite large. Okay. And merely because we were using tools effectively and planning better. And like not having somebody work on nine things, you're actually able to accomplish stuff. It's a miracle. Um, we had prioritization because when we added, we created this process that Mauricio chatted about where if you wanted, there's strategic um, imperatives for the company, you want to do something, basically fund something, you write a one pager, you do a value to cost ratio, and we try to do the, the, the shortest, you know, biggest bang for the buck sort of algorithm. And so we did that, and that's what we started funding, quote unquote funding, meaning staffing. Okay? And so that actually worked. People were using Scrum and Kanban, mainly tech ops projects, because we remember we have our own infrastructure, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, we're Kanban, most of the software development projects were Scrum. Uh, we didn't launch a team until we had everyone on the team that was required to finish the project. Sounds simple, right? But if, if there's going to be a lot of like big data stuff in a project, and there's nobody from that team on the project, it's not going to complete, right? I mean, that's like one-on-one, right? But it's like, we didn't start it until we had everyone, right? And if we came up to a priority project, and we couldn't staff it, we go to the next one, right? And then staff that one. And so that was, that was earth shattering. It's like, you can actually, you staff it, you work on it, it launches, right? Um, oops. I didn't want to go to the back quite yet. Um, all teams had scrum masters, full-time scrum masters. Now, we didn't have enough scrum masters, so the scrum masters might have two to three to four projects, but it wasn't a manager, it wasn't a random engineer this sprint, it was a scrum master. Huge improvement. The bad. Uh, the project portfolio, the backlog, we staffed a whole bunch of projects, were fully committed, but the backlog kept growing. People were submitting stuff, oh, I want to do this next, and I want to do this next. I'm like, hold on, you see the release plan, right? Things aren't really going to be shaken out till like April, May for some of, the, some of these projects. And you know, this is like February, right? And so monotonically, the backlog, the portfolio backlog just increased, okay? We actually 
came up with phases, like if you're gonna release something in bits, there should be some value to it. So we ended up launching stuff you know, iteratively that didn't actually have any value attainment. And then frankly, people really resisted any form of value for the project. I mean, like, is this gonna make us more money? Is it gonna save costs? Whatever. People just like, well, I don't know. Okay, and you know, I was so excited to get the whole damn thing running that it's like, all right, whatever, let's keep going, right? And so but we, what we learned in the course of the first six to seven months of this was, you really gotta look at that because you're, then all of a sudden 28 things get done and it doesn't have a hell of a lot of business impact and I'm happy things got done and finished, but mm, not necessarily good for the business. Uh, staffing, this was a huge problem because these line managers and the dynamic projects didn't click at first. So the line manager's like, oh, I've got a, an IR over here. I'm just pulling some people off a team. And they go work on it for a week. I'm like, well, you can't do that. <laughs> Why are you doing that? You just stop this project. Okay, and context switching. And the ugly, everyone loves ugly dolls, right? <laughs> uh, we actually discovered, we finished something, code complete, it's, it's live, and the go-to-market people are like, what? You really hit that release date? Oh shit, we're not ready. Yeah, so we had something that launched that was done, ready to go in April, and the first customer was on it in July. Huh? Lesson learned. What's your go-to-market plan? Hey, we're expending resources. Like, where's your go-to-market plan? How does that get in the marketplace? That was amazing. Um, prioritization, as I said, it was pretty hard. We had a relatively complicated, we have objectives and initiatives, and then that'll lead to like, we do projects for that initiative. The minute we started, that all went to hell. And it was who, who yelled loudest, right? So that's a, that's a corporate problem. That's not necessarily a process problem or a product development life cycle problem or a software development life cycle problem. Actually sticking to what you state your priorities are you know, once again, easy. And staffing, I talked a little bit about moving resources around. So quality, as, as, as Mauricio indicated, it's always a journey, okay? And so we've got some good culture change. The wall is coming down. DevOps is starting to emerge. But, you know, the biggest arguments we had with the new process is, well, we're not putting a status in there which is ready for QA. The minute you put a status in there, it's called ready for QA, your dev's not working with QA. That's the classic, throw it over the wall. And, right? and we fought that. We didn't put, and we didn't put it in QA. I'm like, we, we they should, it. hey, they sit next to you. <laughs> Turn around and say, hey, this story's ready. Why don't we talk about how to test it? I mean, what the hell? Or if I were still living here, I'd go, stop, I'm not. <laughs> the tools. We optimize for what we're doing. Um, we actually, you know, the simpler portfolio management kind of worked. The service test launch was awesome. As if you can tell, we're kind of using Atlassian for the full suite. Okay. And the tools are tools, right? You can, you can have a crappy tool and have an incredible use of it. or the best, most powerful tools in the world, and you don't know what to do with it. Right, but we actually you know, had some huge success on the tools. So what are the key takeaways here? Um, transformation is hard, okay? People cling to broken processes. They'll all complain, it's not working, we're not getting out the door, whatever. Okay, so what? No, can't change it. I'm comfortable with the broken nature of my reality, right? Who's read, who's moved my cheese? <laughs> right? So I got around 50 copies. I mean, it's really, it's like 30 pages long. It's not that long. And everyone was like the mouse going through the same thing where the cheese isn't and expecting it to be different. Right? No, we're going we're gonna to have to change this, okay? And to make it better. And it requires a huge amount of constant effort. It's like a land war in Asia. <laughs> The minute you stop insisting on it, everything just slides back, okay? It starts from the top. Well, the fish, the fish rots from the head, right? 
So if the executives don't get it, I mean, they're kind of bored. They were excited every week when they got to change priorities and move teams around and whatever. Wow, that feels like we're working. Right? That's work. Well, no. Here's a Kanban board. You really can't see it. But here's the executive Kanban board. Ooh, look, there's the completed. Woo! Lots of completed things. Um, hey, you want to you wanna do this one over here? All right, what are we stopping? We're fully committed. Oh, you mean I have to stop something to start something? I mean, that's... It's an okay thing to do, right? It's agile. Agile, you do agile because the, the environment is changing fast, right? So it may change really fast, and you may have to reprioritize on the fly. But your executives actually have to buy in here. Start with the basics. Everyone, like, agile, uh, an anti-pattern agile, fully mature agile is everyone's doing the exact same thing, right? That's not what we're saying here. If you don't understand what a story is, Right? If you don't understand the basics, you can't, you don't get to uh, like opt into the stuff and start modifying it. It's the Shuha Ri stuff, right? Everyone hear that before? The karate stuff? All right? So start with the basics so everyone's on the same page. How would we do this uh, a little bit differently? So, another, because remember I said accountability was such a huge problem, the corollary to that is nobody wants metrics. Right? Well, hold on a sec. You're tracking our velocity over the sprint, and it should be going up. Velocity over sprint should probably go what? Up. Right? Hmm. Cool. Wow. I guess we should work harder. Right? Oh, what about QA? Hey, we're tracking escape rate now. We didn't do it at first. Now we are. Right? Because escape rate is a huge, a wonderful metric that. Um, that just makes people pay attention and escape through, through the entire process. Because it's not like we want to get better like instantly, but I want to know what our escape rate today is versus 12 months ago. All right? Because that's an investment that we may need to have. So everyone know what the Hawthorne effect is? Uh, Western, what was it? Western Digital? Western Electric, which used to make the teletype machines. They had a Hawthorne plant. And so a bunch of scientific management, you know, Frederick Taylor and all that stuff, they came in and started measuring stuff. Just when they started measuring stuff, the productivity went way up. If you measure something, it gets better. Right? It's kind of human nature. Staffing consistency, keeping people on teams so we can actually attain the team. Real value estimation, before we start something, is it going to make me a million, two million, whatever? Groom the backlog. Make sure the go-to-market people know we're going to be releasing something. Get them involved, and frankly, they should be involved early on, in fact, in the beginning. And then kind of build more of the DevOps culture. The, the other thing I would do is, um, we've, we've, I've kicked off another project at OpenX. Remember I said we're 20,000 servers on-prem? Five minutes? Um, we're moving the entire infrastructure to the cloud. Just signed a huge contract, very high volume. Everyone says the cloud is four times more expensive. At the volumes that we're using, it's cheaper. You're subscale on on-prem with 20,000 servers and five colors. So what's the benefit of the cloud? It's gonna lift up all, it's already lifting up all the rocks. Things that are broken, things that need to be fixed, tech debt that needs to be reprioritized. So maybe if I had started that journey, would have rationalized the platform a little better. Anyway. So thank you very much, but let's have some questions. We only have five minutes, I believe.